Right, I'm just gonna have to rip into this thing. You know what? I need to replace my blade. This is why box cutters are a perfect um, thing. Hey, press day, razor sharp. Hey, a portable power station, Blue Eddy. I'm excited, guys. Get out. Right. Oh, for crying out loud. Gotta say, it's packed well. Oh, I was so hoping there is a blue version and a black version. I was hoping I'd get the black version. And look at that, I did. Boom, that is the blue eddy. Oh, that was a bit of a bloody uh, workout now. So, um, so it's the blue eddy EB150. Whack it up there, there you go. That is what it is. So I'll be doing a review on this. It looks pretty cool. It actually looks better than what it did in the in the um, in the video. I'm not a fan. It's a bit like the you know the old um, I don't know power you know the power banks that you used to have for your computers back in the day. It's got that bit of a look to it. Um, I love that it's got a carry handle. It's heavy, um, but this handle it's lighter than my other one. So I've got another one there. It's a, um, it's the Arc power, it's got, it's, it's a power box that you put a, and I put a hundred watt or 110 or something watt, uh, AGM battery in it. And it's, does a seven cycle. It's got computers and it's like had a 150 watt inverter, which is stupid. It used to blow fuses. It would bloody warn that you couldn't do shit and it was just an absolute pain in the ass piece of junk. It's still out there. The battery is now totally dead. It's useless. Um, and I paid like $400 for that box, $400 for the battery. And um, yeah, it was just, I, I wasted $800 friggin dollars. So this has a lithium battery in it. Nice to see that it's actually got the Australian um, plugs on it. Brilliant. So I'll be doing a review of that. So obviously, why is this useful to me? In the Jeep. Uh, this was another thing for when I was gonna do the Simpson Desert with um, the Chappie. You know, I was saying, I, I just can't afford it. Uh, and then there was also the COVID thing. I was like, way back I was saying, this, we're, gonna, we're gonna spend all this money to get things set up and you know the time out and all that and then the last minute we're going to be in, in bloody lockdown again and we can't do it so um so things were like at the moment i've got the the radiator hoses to do um four new tires take it to the uh, mechanic to do a run check over it to make sure the jeep is going to be fine i mean it's a 20 it's more than 20 year old it's 22 years old that jeep um and then, you know, it's the, it's the expense of doing it. You know, the Jeep going all the way up there and back using bloody petrol. Um, looking at getting a fridge because I only run Eskies because it's all short stuff that we do. I always have access to places to get ice. But when you start heading out into those places, ice ain't gonna cut it. You gotta get a fridge that runs on power. Hence, I need a battery thing. So that was some of the stuff I was looking at. And geez, I need to buy a fridge and then I need to buy another battery pack system because the other blah, blah, blah. So it's just money, 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 money. Um, and then shutting down bike a bits, the website, which means we don't get, it was just, it was just not happening. So that's the, the problem of being a YouTuber, trying to make a living out of it. You, well, me and Nate run on very, you know, we don't have high overheads, which enables us to you know, do what we do. Blah, blah, shut up, Mark. Right, so that's it. <laughs> bloody hell, mailbag time. I wanted to make all this stuff bloody short and quick and I just ramble on like a bloody crazy bastard. Right, eh? get out of here, back to the man cave. <laughs> Right, 
Rightio guys, not a great start to the bloody day. I'm already on the coffee. Got to come clean. So I did that Carby rebuild on Tango, the posty bike, Honda CT 110. Started up brilliantly and ever since it's been starting up brilliantly every time, first time, broom. But I've got a problem. I can't get the mix right. So this was my number one problem. When I did that Carby build, I forgot to count how many turns out they were. So I knew to put, when I put all that new stuff in to rejig it. I've got another posty bike, Charlie. So today I thought, right, I'll go and check what his is. Found it. He was, the idle was one and a half out. Um, and the air or mixture was one and a bit. Set that up on Tango, starts up beautifully, no worries. But he still has that problem. And the problem is that he just idles. And then I try and adjust it back a little bit, and then he conks out. And what's happening is he does the, he, he uh, does the, but once he can settle down, but he settles down and then just uh, conks out. And then when I start him up, he's and then he goes and conks out. And I can't adjust anything for it to pick the right spot because it's, it's just doing this. So I took it for a ride because you can't have it revving too fast because it's a centrifugal, frugal, woogle, bloody clutch. There's no clutch. So if he's revving hard, you put him into gear, oh, off he bloody goes. Or if you come to a stop and he's revving hard, he's not... Oh, I can put him into neutral. Yes, I can put him into neutral. That's not such a bad, anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, yes, I don't know what's going on. I don't know whether I've hooked it all back up. At, let's, I'll just show you first, hang on. Righto. Now, remember, I've still got that electrical, like the key doesn't work. I've got, it's all controlled by that up there. Um, Righto, here we go. See, starts up brilliantly. It's, hold, it's holding the, the rev, but eventually this is gonna die. And this is fairly warm as well. Here we go. Holds the rev. And that's not a bad rev at this minute. But if I have, if I, when this starts to die, it's going to die any minute. So that's, that's revving too hard. I would have to adjust that idle down. Because they're not going to do it now. Oh, come on. I've checked the um, the throttle. It's, the throttle doesn't seem sticky. Like it jumps straight back. It's just not holding a steady. Although it is at the moment. No, here we go. See what I bloody mean? I don't. So I don't know whether that's. I should have, when I cleaned that um, carby, I should have put a, um, what do you call it, a fuel filter, because there was obviously shit that was coming out of this tank. I most probably need to drain this tank, put a fuel filter on, so I don't know whether there's stuff going back into, and that's what's causing the problem, I don't know. Um, is it this, there is a, an electrical problem, because the key does nothing. To turn this off, you have to, to do the kill switch. Um, you know, when we were checking before I did the carby, I could have, there was, at times there was no spark coming through to that bloody, um, spark plug, but ever since I've done the carby clean, this thing fires up every time without, without bloody, uh, fault or anything.
that's how a posty bike, they're just, they're just bloody brilliant, you know, you just jump on it. Oh, I'm saying I'm having a bad day. All right, I'm around here. Actually, guys, I forgot to say, so I took him for a ride around the blocks around here. Road nowhere, I was going through all the gears, but there was flat spots. Um, I think it seemed to be when I get him into the higher revs in each gear, he start to kind of like bog down, if you know what I mean. He'd be going, rrr, 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 kind of stutter, a bit, a little bit stuttery. Um, yeah, so I just don't know what the hell's going on. Worst case scenario, I've got Hal, a mate who is a wizardry at all those bloody carbies and fix, he pulls bikes apart and puts them all back together and all that kind of stuff. So I've got that, but I would like to try and work it out myself. I know you guys that are bloody into this stuff, your brains are going, well, it could be this and it could be that. Leave it in the comments if you want. Um, right now, why my bad, why my day is going bad. So I thought, fine, I'll put Tango to the side. I'll grab Charlie, the posty bike, bring him over here, use the air compressor to pump up his bloody tires. The air compressor trips out me bloody thingo. What the hell's going on? Get it going all right, no worries. Gotta do a service on the air compressor. But, pump up his tires, gonna take him for a run. This is what happens. <laughs> Everything's on, Charlie's electricals are all fine. Oh, you kidding me? Do you think I could get him bloody started? All right, get the old choke. Oh, righty. Well, that just made me day a little bit better. There you go, and that's this is how a posty bike should bloody idle, except for when he runs out like that. Yeah, so bloody hell, I'm thinking right now, I've got to have to do the same thing on this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to overhaul both the uh, both posty bikes at some bloody stage. I'm going to add that to my list of things to get done. They'll get totally all cleaned up. And oh, what was I going to say? And I don't know. I'm just being a bloody dramatist. Marky, surrounded by motorbikes. Why are you whinging? Rightio guys, so we'll give him a quick bloody run. See at times I think, you know, should I sell the posty bikes? Should I sell Harry? Just stick with um, Max. The DR650, because obviously that's the bike that you know I ride majority of the time. Um, but ah, oh, just oh, every time I think about it, I think, yeah, I'm gonna do it. Just sell it. It's costing me money, bloody sitting there. Uh, but then I can't, bloody. Whoop! I took the wrong bloody turn. Oh, I can go this way anyway. Yep. <laughs> uh, the other thing with the posty bikes is I like I like looking at them when they're sitting out in the backyard. I see them. I walk out there and I see them. And they look cool just sitting there. But it's no good just having them bloody sit there. Yeah. They've got to be working. They've got to be moving. All their little oily bits have got to be bloody, uh, you know, running around and doing shit. Otherwise, they just bloody clag up, which is what's obviously happened to them. They're well due for a... Um, oop, I'll just go back the same way. Oop, he's warmed up. Hang on. He's a demon. <laughs> oh, Jesus, look out, Charlie. Down again. Whoa! Woohoo! Jesus, that's slid in that mud. Shit. Oh, 
that must be slippery. Woo! All right, we've got a tree down here somewhere. There it is. Hey! Shit. Whoa! <laughs> Holy crap! Um, right, eh? Man, that is greasy as. Oh. Okay, keep going, Mark. Bloody hell. So, yeah, look, once Charlie gets going, he's a bloody weapon. But, yeah, like I said, I've got to do an overhaul. I was saying, yeah, I, you know, whoop, I keep thinking about bloody having to, you know, to sell these things. I just can't come at it. I don't want the regos to run out on them because, you know, the boys, bloody come over and they, you know, come out at night time and want to take them for a ride. And, and they are fun, you know, if I want to jump on them. Now, I could get away with it. Um, you know, doing, because I've got so much bush around, but, yeah, I don't know. Just can't come at it. So, the plan is I have to do up both of these bloody uh, poster bikes. I've got, to, I've got to get them to bloody spot on again. Come on, mate. Hey, cars. You're pre look, you're all good. Rightio. Well, okay, that has made my day a whole lot better. Bloody brilliant. Woohoo, Mario Kart. <laughs> hey, Jim's mowing. Whoop. Round we go. Oh, Jesus. Just hit the bloody side. <laughs> hey. Ah. And we're back. Right, hey, Charlie. Bloody brilliant, mate. Thanks. Rightio, so I've got to go and uh, grab some supplies. I thought I'd take Whiskey, the CB250. He's got that dodgy battery. I charged him up when I did the, uh, the what do you call it, that lithium battery charger, the Tender Junior 800. I've just did him again because I know it's pretty knackered, but hopefully he'll start. Power, that's good. Ah, oh, hang on. Have I got that issue? Nothing. Dead as a doornail. Let me see if I can jump him, guys. Oh, righty. So, the old bloody sort of jumpy, jumpy thing. That should... Yeah, that's clicking. Cool. Power. Petrol's on. I've got petrol. Chokes on. Doesn't want to. Oh. The problem, see, I was saying this about bloody bikes not uh, being used. Right, cool. Flooded it. Smells all right. Right. New battery. Oh dear, ups and downs of a day. So I'm gonna to have to go buy a new battery because I definitely cannot ride that. That bike runs really bloody good. Once you get him warmed up, takes a couple of minutes and hey presto, no worries. So I'm gonna go buy a new battery, get him all up and going, make sure he's all fine because I'm gonna to have to add him to the list 
He's got to be sold. Um, I thought Brody was going to be bloody uh, riding this, and he's just not riding it, so I'm going to sell it. Now, I've got a problem. Um, obviously, I get a new battery in it. That'll, that should fix the problem because um, I know it runs really good. Getting a roadworthy. I'd like to sell it with a roadworthy, but that's too loud with those pipes. And I'm pretty sure we welded those bloody pipes on there. So I've got to, I've got to make it so that it's going to pass a roadworthy in this, from the sound point. I think everything else on it will be fine. Um, or do I sell it without a roadworthy? Don't know. But yeah, I'll sell that because it's just sitting here and like, you know, your bikes, you've got to be using the bloody bikes for Christ's sake. Um, also, it'll double that the money that I get out of that bike can go towards that um, adventurizing um, bike. You know, I'm thinking that I'll buy a bit of a shitter of a bike, get it all done up, adventurize it, do a full, a full thing on it. Right, I'm just, I'll, I'll go get a battery. Right, got the battery out. It's a bloody auto power. Obviously, there's a missing thing there. I was coming up with AP. I think the important part is the uh, the TX7L. Um, some had C, or actually on the top it says, there you go. See up the top there. But when I do the research on the thing, there was all different APs, and I think it's all to do with the brand. Maybe that C part comes into it. But I figure there's a Y. There's a Y one that's going to do the job. I've checked the measurements and everything, and it's pretty much tiny little bit bigger. Shut up, Mark. I'm going to get the battery. Rightio, guys. Got the new battery. Perfect bloody size. Brilliant. Now we're just charging it. Gonna go and have some lunch. Rightio guys, it's now bloody night time. You can see that out there. Yeah, this day has not gone the way I thought. You can see night time, and if we zoom out, May's over in her shed. She's building shelves and stuff. We'll go and have a look in a minute. But for now, I seem to have... So I started off charging, because this had like 50% in it, so I used, where is it? It's down there. So oh, <clears throat> use that because it says that this can charge a battery. I mean, its primary use is to, you know, just trickle charge. Um, so I thought I'd use that on this new battery. Anyway, it did it really quick. It went, went into float mode really quick. And I thought that can't be right. So I put my tester on it and um, it showed that it was there. Now, normally I know when I put this tester on just after putting um, it on a chart, like a fully charged, it's like normally up here. And then after, you know, half an hour, an hour, it settles back down to there. So that was weird. So I thought, hmm, okay. I put my C-Tech one on, which is just a proper charger. That's what it does. It does go into a float mode as well. Um, but it's primary, it has all these functions. Whether they're good or not, I don't know, but it, I know it charges up. So I've put that on, and this is only just now gone, it's like full, full bloody charged. It's not sitting in the float yet. I think that's the float, yeah. So, interesting, so yeah, that's why it's night time. So yeah, interesting. Don't rely on one of those to charge your battery. Only use those to keep as a tender, not as a charge. I mean, obviously, in, if, if you've got nothing else, you can bloody you'll be able to put some charge into it. But yeah, that was uh, that was interesting. There you go. So uh, I'll most probably come back to you tomorrow because I'm not starting it up now. It's too bloody late, and I've got to go get tea because apparently it's takeaway. Cool. Oh. Hello. They can't really hear you too much because I'm using the other mic. So anyway, I knew you were doing this. Nay's been in here using up her scrap pieces of wood. All the scraps that yep. we're using. To build all these little bloody drawer things. So she's had this one here. And what she does is all her signs that she makes. 
oh, don't pull the wrong one. Yeah, so she can put all those signs that are ready to be start working on, can go in these bloody pull out things, which means she doesn't have to have them sitting up on all the benches. Which means eh? I can put other crap all over the benches. Exactly. <laughs> Um, she also put some uh, extra shelves up there now, which is really good. Brilliant. Marvellous. Doing a fantastic job. And they haven't seen it yet, but tomorrow we'll show them the uh, raised garden bed that you've made. Oh, yeah, using up more scrap wood. That's it. Right, eh? I've got to go get tea. Excellent. Kentucky Fried Chicken? Make it fabulous. All right. See ya. See ya. Rightio guys, it's the next day. It's actually in the afternoon, late afternoon, I think. 4.30 in the afternoon. So, battery got charged, all put in, all done up. Haven't touched it. Let's see what a new battery does for starting a bike. Oop, nearly went. Beautiful. So I'll take him for a uh, quick ride. See how he goes. Oh, his tyres will be right. Oh, hang on. Put it on bloody reserve. Oh, got to do that up. Much better. Right, hey guys, let's take him. Uh, Taking for a ride. Right here, guys, I actually took him around the block just so he bloody gets all his splurts and dirts out. He's all nice and warmed up, chokes off. Now let's go for a spurt. Hey! Once he's warmed up, he just runs real good. And he loves to run fast in the high revs, which I think is normal for these types of bikes. Yeah, the, yeah I don't know. These guys, I tell you what, it's bloody cold. I think it was the top of uh, 12 degrees um, Celsius. Uh, we'll go this way, we'll go through the tunnel. Give it a crack through here, what do you reckon? So this is, uh, you know, this is the next level up from the, you know, the old, uh, it's a big upgrade from the posty bikes, but this bike's really good for zipping around, like around town, bloody great bike. I'll just head up here, see what's up here. Gotta be 
careful through here. It's a bit of a... Uh, be mindful of the locals. And then as you guys know, if I wanted to go off-road on this, um, can I go down here? Somewhere down here. No problem whatsoever. Oh, I don't want to get him dirty. Come on. He's all clean. Don't be a pussy, Mark. Hey! Oh, bloody worries! It's just a, um, it's a shame that Brody's not bloody, you know, riding the bike. But if it's not going to be ridden, Moz will uh, sell it to somebody else who's going to, you know, get the enjoyment out of this bike. Because it really is a great bike. Oh, looks like Matt has turned up. Guys, let's just put it out so we can stand back and admire this bloody beast of a thing. It's not a beast, it's just a great bike. Alright, there he is, that is Whiskey 2003 Honda CB250, customised to be a scrambler, brat bike, whatever the hell you want to call it. Motor's great on it, everything works, sounds Fantastic. One of the best sounding bikes I've heard. Apparently that was my sales pitch. <laughs> right oh, so there you go. Lesson to be learnt for me. You gotta have a good battery in your bike. Number one. Look after your battery. If you're not gonna be riding your bike for extended periods of time, put it on a battery bloody tender. Look after the battery, save yourself some money out of the old uh, wallet. So now I've got to work out, I'll give it all a clean up, uh, I'll run a service on it. Then I've got to, in my head, I'm not 100% sure, I've got to work out how much am I going to sell it for, am I going to sell it with a roadworthy or without a roadworthy. Um, yeah, how am I going to dispose of this bike? Because it's just, yeah, silly. Someone should be enjoying this bike. Um, not it just sitting in here and being a cool backdrop for bloody Mark's videos. Righto, let's uh, head over to the office. Rightio guys, it's time for BB News and Shit. And as always, we'll check out the crew members. There they are, look at them, bloody awesome fellas. And look, we've even got someone from Finland. Bloody ripper guys, thanks heaps. Got an email from uh, someone that has bought a sign, a Harley Davidson sign from Nay. Check this out. This is uh, Pat's bike, there's the sign. Man, that bike is absolutely awesome looking. I love that Harley sign. That well, I don't even know what it actually means if there's some to it. And look at the helmet, bloody brilliant. Good on you, Pat. Awesome looking bike, man. Rightio, so now it's time to check out what crew members have been out and about. Let's have a look. Rightio, so Caleb, our intrepid bloody uh, riding his cafe racer around, not all the way around Australia, but around a bloody long way. Um, week two of our 12,000 kilometre trip around Australia on a 250cc cafe racer. G'day Mark, more than happy to keep you updated. 
Since I updated you last week in Newcastle, we've headed further north. We pulled into Tamworth to check out the big guitar and then continue on to Tia Falls near Walcha for an incredible sunset. The next day we travelled along the Waterfall Way in New South Wales to Jamba, just south of Byron Bay. Byron Bay, guys, um, for those that don't know, is the most easterly point of Australia. We had a much needed rest day in Yamba and swapped out the thermals and boots for board shorts and thongs. <laughs> Heading out of Yamba and into Brisbane, I picked up a defect notice on my bike's exhaust. Are oh, you kidding me, bloody hell. Uh, which made it complicated being a Victorian bike with a New South Wales defect notice being fixed in Queensland. Lockdown hit Brisbane the day after we arrived, so we quickly packed the car and headed out of the southeast Queensland region to Kuya, which is home to apparently one of Australia's friendliest pubs. On the way out of Kuya, we stopped off at McCoy's Cafe and met former superbike racer Gary McCoy. Later that day near Nanango, the bike just lost power, felt like I had run out of fuel. Wasn't sure what the issue was, drained the fuel bowl, changed the spark plug, but still wasn't revving, idling. Luckily, we had broken down in front of a legend named Bill. He was a mechanic before buying some land and running cattle. We took the bike up to his shed and he pulled the carby off. Turns out the main jet had rattled itself loose. Oh, wow. Very wet, we made it into Harvey Bay, then a really short ride to Bundaberg. We're expecting 40 millimetres of rain today, so taking another rest day before we head further north towards Cairns tomorrow. Bloody awesome, Caleb. Love the photos, bloody great stuff, mate. Continue to keep us updated. Righto, guys, that's it. That's uh, BB News and shit done. Quick, short and simple. Back out to the man cave. Well, there you go, guys. That's Man Cave Tuesday done and dusted for another bloody week. Hope you all enjoyed it. Remember, keep on riding, and if you ain't riding, keep on keeping on.